It brought us the Roaring Twenties, the Space Age, and the Information Age, the 50s and the 60s. Radio, television, satellites, and cell phones all caught up in a swirling sea of change. And it introduced a new voice in music, our voice. From the ground, to the air, to the sky, to the concert hall, this has been the American Century. Welcome to the American Century, an exploration of America's modern musical legacy, hosted by David Dubow. The American Century is sponsored on 96.3 FM WQXR by American Century Investments with over 40 years mutual fund management experience. This is the American Century, heard on WQXR 96.3 FM each Sunday at 12.05. I'm David Dubal. Join me for a journey of American music by American composers in this amazing century. On this program, we offer a dazzling variety of music by six American composers. We shall open with a seven-minute piece called Dog Heaven by Paul Schoenfield. It's from his Four Parables. Mr. Schoenfield was born in 1947 he studied mathematics as well as his chosen art. Schoenfield, who was also an excellent pianist, writes music in a hybrid yet somehow original style. Four Parables is set for piano and orchestra. They were composed in 1982-83. Of the last movement, Schoenfield said, Dog Heaven was inspired by an encounter with two children whose mother had gotten rid of the family pet as a punishment. Mm. To assuage their pain, I made up this fanciful story about a jazz club in Dog Heaven, a place where the streets are lined with bones and there is a fire hydrant on every corner. Well, it may be a dog's paradise, but not one for human motorists in Dog Heaven. I think you'll get a kick out of this piece so expertly written and beautifully performed by pianist Jeffrey Kahane with John Nelson conducting the New World Symphony.
For seven minutes, you've been in Paul Schoenfield's Dog Heaven, the last of his four parables for piano and orchestra. Jeffrey Kahane was the soloist. John Nelson led the New World Symphony. I'm David Dubal, your commentator on WQXR's The American Century, a weekly exploration of American classical music. One of the best known of American composers at this time is John Corleano, who in recent years had his opera The Ghosts of Versailles performed at the Met. John Corleano's music has high flair, often very dramatic, colorful, always accessible, and composed with real instrumental virtuosity. The man knows instruments up and down. For many years, his father, John Corleano Sr., was concertmaster of the New York Philharmonic. And we hear the late violinist perform the lovely Andantino from his son John Corleano's Violin Sonata. Ralph Vodapak is the pianist in this collaboration.
That was the Andantino movement from John Corleano's Violin Sonata, performed by the composer's father, John Corleano Sr., and Ralph Vodapek, who was, by the way, the first winner of the Van Cliburn competition, was the pianist. Let's continue today's edition of the American Century with music by Alec Wilder, suite number two for tenor saxophone and strings. Wilder was an unusual personality who was comfortable writing pop songs, jazz, and in the concert forms. This suite, composed for the saxophone legend Zoot Sims, was composed in 1966. It's a perfect example of Wilder's moving easily in different idioms. Incidentally, pop singer Frank Sinatra was so taken with Wilder's beguiling music that he made a recording of Wilder's music, not as a singer, but as a conductor, his only experience in the field. But let's hear now the five-movement, ten-minute score, suite number two for tenor saxophone and strings by Alec Wilder. Richard Alden Clark conducts the Manhattan Chamber Orchestra with Gary Louis saxophone.
That was Alec Wilder's first appearance on the American Century, as it was John Corleano and Paul Schoenfield. We have heard the tenor sax suite number two by the late Alec Wilder. Richard Alden Clark conducted his Manhattan Chamber Orchestra with Gary Louis on saxophone. This is WQXR's The American Century, and we will resume in one moment with music by David Amram. We return to the American century, and our next excursion into our American musical production is by the gifted composer David Amram. He's prolific, and he disdains no musical medium. He's composed such film scores as Splendor in the Grass and The Manchurian Candidate. He plays himself a variety of instruments, the French horn, the kazoo, whistles of all types, percussion of all types, flutes, In fact, everything he touches, he turns musical. I've known him for many years, and I've always been astonished at the warmth of the person. But read his autobiography, Vibrations, written about 20 years ago. It reveals a lot, and it's good reading. Today we hear from his American dance suite, the last movement, Cajun. Richard Alden Clark conducts the Manhattan Chamber Orchestra. Thank you. 
I hope you've enjoyed that bit of Americana by David Amram, who was born in 1930. It was Cajun, the finale from his American dance suite from the American century. Richard Alden Clark directed the Manhattan Chamber Orchestra. What would our American century be without the wit, charm, and often hilarity of Peter Shickley, long known as a musical comedian? But he's also a serious composer. We hear today from the Quartet for Clarinet, Violin, Cello, and Piano, the quite fast dancing movement. The premiere took place in 1982, and Shickley dedicated the work to his father. Here it is, quite fast and dancing, and we hear members of Chamber Music Northwest.
Peter Shickley, known and loved by countless fans, writes music that is quite wonderful. We heard a movement from his quartet for clarinet, violin, cello, and piano, performed by members of Chamber Music Northwest. The final selection on today's The American Century is the delightful Allegro Giacoso from the Piano Concerto Opus 14 by Kevin Oldham. Oldham was born in 1960 and was lost to us from AIDS in 1993. He had composed his concerto the year before. Oldham was a fine pianist, and although dying in a hospital, he literally left his bed. With superhuman strength, he gave the world premiere with his hometown orchestra, the Kansas City Symphony. It was in January 1993. Returning to the hospital, he died six weeks later. We listen to this effervescent score with William McLaughlin conducting the Kansas City Symphony Orchestra with Ian Hobson as the piano soloist.
That was Kevin Oldham's Piano Concerto Opus 14, his last work, the Allegro Giacoso Movement. Ian Hobson was pianist. William McLaughlin was conductor of the Kansas City Symphony. It was McLaughlin who was the conductor at the premiere. American Century Investments is pleased to sponsor the American Century on WQXR. American Century is proud to celebrate 40 years of experience in mutual fund management, providing investment services to millions. Return with us next week when the American Century presents music of Arthur Foote, Edward McDowell, Walter Piston, and others. This is David Duball. Thank you for listening.